Hey guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, going to go over an email that I sent from a subscriber. This is from a guy, sounds like he's about 35 years old. He both lives and works in Asia. And he's been living there for a long time. And he's writing in to share his story for, to help guys really understand that the idea and the narrative that if guys are fed up with the gals here in the West and are looking for an ideal wife or girlfriend or whatever, head over to Asia. And then it'll be much easier for you. The gals are different, haven't been infected by feminism, all that. It'll be, everything will be wonderful. He's writing in to let you guys know on his own experiences that guess what? It's the same over there. Not as bad as here in the West, of course. But still, at the end of the day, women behave like women. They behave like them, respond to and do the things they do, regardless where you live, even in Asia. And I thought it'd be a very good one to go over here to share his story because you're going to see just that. And ultimately, at the end of his story, he definitely has the last laugh in terms of how he was treated. But it's going to show you guys, like I say all the time, it doesn't make a difference where you are in this world. Men are men. Women are women. It doesn't make a difference where you are located, what your culture is, religion, socioeconomic status, education. Men do what we do what we do. We're motivated by the same things. We respond to the same things. We're capable of all the same things. The same thing as the gals. So, because a lot of guys do, the narrative is they go over to Asia, hey, they got it made. And sure, what it seems a lot of the gals, particularly Southeast Asia, are more feminine and all that, but still, they still do what they do. So you must be careful if you have the idea in your head that, hey, I'm going to go over there, I'll be a lot better. Not necessarily the case. And a lot of times here in these stories I cover, guys, mainly the personal stories. A lot of times the awful things happen to guys, not just because, yes, the gals nowadays, sadly, are really pretty freaking bad, as you all well aware. But also, a lot of it also happens when the guys act weak. And so if a guy acts weak over in Asia with the Asian gals, even if they're not as bad as the Western women, still, men can expect a similar results. So guys do have to act like men, not be a bunch of pansies, man up, if you will, Use the knowledge you've gained from here and other channels. It'll help you out immensely. But if you think you're just going to go over there and do the same things you do over here, that have gotten you in trouble, you're in for a world of hurt. And this guy's story is going to prove that. Now, real quick before I do this, I'm going to read a quick email I got from a subscriber thanking me for my channel and my work and all that. And this is actually from a female subscriber. And she's right in saying how pretty much my channel and the stories really helped her open her eyes to see what the reality is. She says here, Hi, SSM. I've been a huge fan of your channel for the last few months, and I'm proud to be one of your female subscribers. I'm a single, 36-year-old woman. I'm not a serial dater, nor do I ride any type of machinery. Your channel has given me a massive insight and appreciation of the value of men and a very scary exposure into some of the types of behavior that I had no idea women showed towards men. Well, honey, I don't know how you don't haven't been aware of this, but I guess maybe you just... Maybe you're smart enough to realize that I don't want to hang out with a lot of gals because I know what they're capable of, but you just didn't know the extent of what they're capable of. Um, it is embarrassing as a woman to be associated in any way with what has come to be shown as typical female behavior by some. I work with a lot of men and advocate your channel to anyone who will listen to me. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Keep up the good work and the support you give both men and your female viewers from a very loyal fan. Well, hey, it was great to hear from you. I appreciate what you had to say. Yes, it's a mess out there, but definitely keep showing me to uh, your, your guy friends and guy co-workers and any gals that you happen to bump into that actually are more traditional and don't like what's going on out there today, that are not a big fan of the feminists. Show them my work. I appreciate it very much. All right, guys, on to the main story. And by the way, the guy that is writing this story in, I did a video on his a couple weeks ago, which was called, I was conned by a secretly engaged older gal, only to help her, her man dump her five years later. And this is the guy when he was 19 that he was having a fling with an older woman who was just using him for the SCX. I know, poor him. But he found out eventually that she had another guy and was trying to get pregnant. It's a big freaking mess. He says here, hello, SSM. This is the guy who at 19 had an older woman try to have my child and raise it with her beta boyfriend back in 2009. Five years later, I gave him some proof of her cheating, and that was that. So recently, I was watching your videos, and, and as usual, I noticed a lot of people talking about whether things are better or different in Asia. Well, after the aforementioned experience, I moved to Asia, as you may recall, and I decided I would share a story about dating here in case anyone in the audience had their doubts as to whether Asia was a safer place to date slash marry. And he says, spoiler alert, it is not. 
And gentlemen, you're about to see why he says that. So although this story follows on from my other one, it is not all related and, is, and this really is, it isn't really an update. Though I guess it's a story of progress toward the point that I am right now where I don't give them time of day. And ironically, they love me more than ever. Well, of course, when a man's on his purpose, on his grind, and he makes himself the priority, and he doesn't put women on the pedestal, they chase after him. If, of course, he has his shit together, and he has he's obviously decent looking, and has things going on, money, resources. Of course, because you see, that's the allure of the bad boy. The bad boy doesn't put women first. He puts himself first, always. Even if he's an asshole about it. And they chase after him. Isn't that interesting? A bad boy doesn't give a shit whether they like him or not because he can always replace him. And he's got more important things than that. Nice guys do the opposite. And that's why they're chasing after you, bro, because you don't give a shit. And obviously, you're obviously a white, a, a white man in Asia. And you're older and you got some resources. So, of course, you know, they're like a moth to a flame. You may recall that I moved overseas to attend college from 2011 to 2014. Towards the end of my degree, I was drinking with a friend from the Netherlands, and I don't remember much that night. About a week later, a beautiful Chinese gal approached me and asked, Do you remember me? I told her she must be mistaken because I sure as hell would remember her, but she insisted we had met that night. It turns out that she was the bartender for one of the bars, and she would later uh, ask to learn English from me. Needless to say, I taught her English for about a week straight. Well, did you teach her English while you were feeding her your sausage? A couple months later, she asked to be exclusive and we began dating. Now, this woman was a real 10, like she had won a beauty pageant held in her area. To any of the young guys out there, unless you're absolutely rolling in money, high status, famous, etc., avoid the 10s. I don't care if you are high status, rolling in money, and famous, still avoid the 10s. They are not girlfriend marriage material and you all know why it is never ending bs with them okay they are hookups they're someone you date while you're dating other girls but tens they they the, the egos are to the stratosphere and not to mention they're usually insecure as hell and inviting a whole lot of drama they're just someone that you essentially have on a short-term basis girlfriend material in my opinion are eights eights are good enough that they're darn good looking good bodies Believe me, you walk into your room and, and people see you with, with a girl who's an eight and you're getting the respect and all that. But the, the nines and tens, no. And I don't want to hear people say, well, just obviously you're not a real man, SSM, if you can't handle a nine or a ten. I'm a real man. I just don't need the bullshit. And I don't want you guys to have the bullshit. Anyway, I'm going off track here. I was an early 20s student, so... The right move for me was just to bang this chick and continue on my grind. But no, I was young and got suckered into the relationship. But keep in mind, this is between the events of the previous email, so I was not yet aware of being the side guy of my previous girlfriend. Basically, I was we very weary of women, but didn't quite see the full picture yet. Fast forward a bit, and I had to do a visa run. Basically, I ducked overseas and came back on a different visa. I lined up a job, and things were looking good. I'd always intend to live here, but my original plan was to amass some money in my home country between visas. Instead, uh, my, the girlfriend invited me to stay at her house rent-free for a while to save that money. Bad idea. And by the way, bad idea that uh, you're in a relationship with her. You need to be focused, like you said. You didn't know much better back then, but you should have been focused on your studies, your goals, making something of yourself. And you can just nail her on the side. You don't need her as your girlfriend. And a 10 is a girlfriend when you're not really anyone yet, bad idea. And no, you should not live with her. You should never live, li ever live with a woman that you're involved with, ever. Unless you've been with her for years and you're moving in as the final test to see if I can marry this chick. That's it. Because wait, wait, wait till you see, guys, what happens when he goes on her turf. Watch how the script is flipped like that. And the BS that goes on. That, guess what, still goes on over there regardless what guys think of the Asian gals. Actually, I told her I wouldn't do the long distance, so she probably saw it as the only way that we could stay together. This gentleman is where I effed up royally. I agreed and moved in with her and intended to stay for a few months while I got used to the new job. I told her that she had to get out of the bar work as soon as I started dating her, so she was working as a Chinese tutor instead. Although I was a young, attractive man with a reasonably good-looking future, 
Uh, her giving me a place to stay while I established myself was the point where she started to be overly critical of the speed of progress. There you go. You're barely involved with her. Not, not You're involved with her not that long. You're living with her and already she's telling you how to live your freaking life. Right then and there, you had to nip that right in the bud. Say, hey, you're not my wife. You're not my fiance. You're barely my girlfriend. Don't tell me how to live my freaking life. I'm going at my own pace. That's a problem. Hey. I'll find someplace else to live and someone else to date. Unfortunately, he doesn't. She's a 10, of course. Says here, um, I also have I also have always been one of one to have a side business or side businesses and other little projects where she wanted to give me wanted me to give them up just to focus on my regular job. Again, you're not my wife. I guess this mindset is probably influenced by Asian culture. Anyway, I was getting pretty tired of it, so I was in fact working as hard as I could to get my own place. The thing was, living with her, I noticed that her possessions and income didn't really line up. She had a lot of designer items, but was tutoring was not only going to be paying off those kinds of things. One day she slipped up and told me that a movie was good, one that was only showing in the cinemas. There was no time that she could have seen those movies aside from her time of her Chinese lessons. He says, you see where this goes. I confronted her and she told me probably half the truth. So in other words, somebody's paying for all these things that she has in her apartment. Because obviously she doesn't have the money to do so. And as you said, she's a 10. 10s have no problem getting dudes. And no problem getting dudes that were clueless to give them money. He says, as it turned out, although the uh, Chinese language lessons were legit, they often were more like dates where the guy could practice Chinese while talking, taking my girlfriend to dinner, a movie, shopping, etc. There you go. And they're thinking, yes, I'm going to get this girl. And she's, you know, the foodie dates. Girls got with guys to get a free dinner. Well, there you go. But she's also getting free shoes and handbags. And she's probably telling them that she's single. Or probably telling them that her boyfriend is awful to her or some bullshit story. Does this not sound like the stuff that happens here? There you go, guys. I'd wager she sometimes had sausage for dessert. Either way, she was a liar, and I was now stuck in a less than ideal situation as I only just started my job and was reliant on her for accommodation. You never want to be reliant on anybody, especially a gal, especially a 10. Because she was just hooking up with you, thinking that you're going to be bringing her, you know, the jackpot. After a heated conversation, she claims that she was, wasn't cheating and she only used the guys for money. Well, even if she wasn't cheating, the fact that she was openly having no problem using the guys for money, that shows you her character. The more she spoke, the more I realized how vile this, uh, these women really are. She knew she, she knew she had me by the balls, but I wasn't about to put up with the situation. So when she went to work, I left the country. I packed my shit, used the money I had to leave, and lined up a good friend of mine who let me sleep on his couch. This is the only reason I was in my home country when the boyfriend in the previous story looked me up to find evidence of his girlfriend's cheating. I quit my job via email, basically started from scratch again in my country. Well, that really sucks that all happened, but I mean, all that can be avoided if you didn't move in with her. You could have found another way, but again, you were young, yet no, and she was smoking hot, and I'm sure you'll all reason go right out the door because she's smoking hot. Um, it was a huge setback and I was stupid altering my plan to begin with. But don't worry, this is where I shunned women. Focusing on my grind, took the RP and got myself to the point that I am today. I couldn't give a fuck about women and they all love me. Go figure. That's why they love you, because you don't care. I can't make that any more clear. I said in the beginning with the bad boys. Bad boys don't give a shit. Bad boys can be charming and fun and everything, but they really don't care. Because they know the gals are a dime a dozen. It's the nice guys out there that a girl talks to them and they act like it's never that she's the first girl in history to even look at them and they start kissing her butt and imagining a magical life with her and they're bothering her all the time with texts and messages and she is in a herpy. Oh, got myself a nice guy. Meanwhile, the gals know a bad boy a mile away. And again, like I said, you live in Asia now. You're you're near thirties. So your prime is really kicking into gear. And you're white, let's be honest here. So they're thinking cha-ching, and that's why they're after you now. And you don't give a shit. So you can have all the fun you want now, my man. And I know you know this. 30s, 40s, 50s, hell, 60s, as long as you keep up with your freaking Viagra Cialis. 
Over the following years, the Chinese uh, gal's Instagram revealed a new pair of fake tits, countless international holidays, and a wealthy beta husband. Of course she found a beta husband, no shit. And of course she got a boob job. But perhaps unsurprisingly, every year or so since she's re she reaches out to me in some way. What I, what I tell you guys, they always come back. Right there. She's been reaching out to him for more than a decade. Guarantee. But there's more to this. Now that I'm in my 30s, well-established living in the same country is even worse. She invites me to dinners and most recently a holiday t together on the 14th of February, no less. Which, which, and I quote, she said, this, these are her words that she messaged him. My husband will be okay with because he knows I'm not a cheater. <laughs> this poor clueless bastard probably tells him she's going away with the girls or something like that. Either way, what a effing joker. Yeah, I should probably block her, but she, but she's a yearly reminder why I avoid them like to play. Plus, I like to leave her on read. It just goes to show it's the same thing here. It's the same everywhere. Do not come to Asia and expect to be different guys. Married in a relationship, it means nothing. Cheating is rampant. Ephemism hasn't fully taken hold, <clears throat> but jump onto a dating app and you'll see the same women who include the patriarchy in the dislike section of their profile. Or worse, 38 years old, wants kids, and ready to get the guy she deserves. Meanwhile, her photos are all taken in the club, and she could probably get a job haunting houses. He says, if you're a guy in your prime and are somewhat established, you'll be able to find women easily to sleep with fairly easily. But forget about finding a girlfriend or wife here. 90% of the women who have come onto me were later revealed to have a husband, boyfriend, secret child, or worked in some kind of unsavory industry on the side. And he says... And for gals from all different Asian countries, and he lists them all right here. All the same, he says. Anyway, luckily, this is the last story you'll get from me, as I don't interact with them anymore and, and I, than I have to nowadays. I just feel this may help, help out some guys who are under the false impression that Asian gals are more traditional. Plus, it's always fun to see them come crawling back when the tables are turned. Thanks, as always. So there you go, guys. That is from a guy who's been living there for a while. Dated plenty, hooked up with plenty. They come on to them all the time. And again, husbands, boyfriends, fiancés, kids, a past. It's the same thing everywhere. Men are men, and we do what we do, respond what we do, and women are women, for better or for worse. And he said, yes, effinism hasn't had quite the impact over there yet. But still. Now, I know there have been guys that have written me and told me that they are actually have Asian wives. And it's great and all that. And I said, that's awesome. So again, just like anything, it's not everybody. But the point is, if you think you're going to go off to, off to the east, and it's going to be a magical land, you're going to and get what you want, be aware. There's a guy right here telling you exactly what he's experienced. So listen to his wise words. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me just think about this. Any of you guys have experience of this, let's hear about it in the comment section. Your words will definitely be helpful. Remember, guys come here because they love to watch the videos, but they also love to read the comments. So when you write comments, it does help dudes out. And also, guys, if you haven't, this is your first time here, definitely subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to my other channels, SSM Clips, and they did what? Really trying to grow the channels this year. And the more numbers I sign up, the more YouTube promotes me. And I can get this message out there to help dudes all over the world. So I really appreciate you signing up. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.